I didn't decide to be a monster. I didn't even know I was one at first, and sometimes I miss those days. I've never killed anyone, in armour or otherwise, or captured anyone, virgin or otherwise. <laughs> My family are herbivores. No one ever believes that. I think it's the teeth. <laughs> or the scales. But I am a monster. I must be, because here I am in chains in this specially made dungeon, made for those like me. I came quietly when they brought me here. I almost regret that now, how docile I was then. When she first came to visit, I believe it was out of boredom, or perhaps curiosity. I don't suppose she'd seen a thing like me before. But she spoke to me, not at me, she spoke to me. At first our conversation was, as far as I understand these things, fairly trivial. Small talk, but no less pleasant. To be asked who I am, how I am, well, it's a novelty. <laughs> as we grew more used to each other, more comfortable, she stayed longer and talked more. She began to read me stories. I like that. I tried to tell her a few of my own, in turn. And she grew bolder or, or fonder or both. She stroked my snout and she told me I was beautiful. She told me I was beautiful. She said that my eyes were stars and that my scales shimmered like sunlight on the ocean. I've never seen the ocean. Is she beautiful? I wouldn't know how to tell. Princesses have never been my thing. <laughs> She's kind and clever. And when she appears, things are brighter. One day she kissed me very gently and then she cried. I didn't understand it first, but I knew I'd failed her. She didn't come back for a week. A whole terrible, boring, deadly, heart-wrenching week. And when she did, she cried again, but in a different way, as if she'd failed me. It took time that day, but she told me the truth. She'd let herself believe that I'd been enchanted in some way, that a curse had been placed upon me. In short, that I might be a human prince. I can't believe she assumed I was a boy, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> but she was my friend, and she was sorry, and I forgave her her foolishness. The next time she came, she was serious, but no longer sad. We'll just find a different way to set you free, she said. I have to admit it's a beautiful idea, the thought of spreading my wings into flight again, to unfurl, rise, to simply move where I pleased. <coughs> the possibility of it was maddening, wonderful and beyond belief, of course. Of course tantalizing. And she was on edge with it too, I could feel it. Why, I wondered, was this of importance to her? Because I know what it's like to be in a prison too. A different look on her face then. Oddly strong, undefeated, not really a princess look to the best of my scanty knowledge. Perhaps I have been making assumptions too, all this while. Oh.